Hey, it's Rob. Welcome to The Everyday Investor, the hottest real estate investment show in the world. That's right. I said it. I don't care who knows it. We've got a phenomenal show for you. We're going to talk about how we can make money investing in student rentals. And uh, I'm very excited because my guest co-host today is CA, CPA, uh, really smart accountant, young lady, uh, Cherry Chan's on the show, as well as we have uh, two everyday investors that are coming on, Roger and Evelyn, and they're going to teach us how they're making over 80% annualized returns investing in student rentals. You don't want to go anywhere. Let's, just, let's get this show going. Today we're going to be talking about how we can make money in student rentals. I have a, a good friend, Cherry Chan, on the show right now. Cherry, it's great to have you here. Hi, nice. Yes. Good to, good to be here, too. Thank you for, uh, for coming. We have a, uh, a mutual friend, uh, Erwin yes. uh, Zito, who yeah. is uh, a uh, real estate uh, specialist, investor. Uh, you know, I think he even runs a bit of a, an investment network. Yeah. Uh, but uh, more importantly, he happens to be your husband. <laughs> yes. Yes. And father of two. <laughs> Very important to me. He yeah. he he, uh, he has a great teacher in you, I guess. He is, and he is pretty much the only, um, the very reason that I started investing in real estate. No, no, I said he yeah. has a great teacher in you. Oh, in me. Yes, yes, of course. Yeah, I of mean, course. how can, uh, listen, when, uh, when I have started my uh, investment portfolio, uh, the most important things that I need is my team. Of mm -hmm. course, my mm -hmm. accountant, oh, yeah. my, my accountant probably being the most important person on my team. Uh, before we get into the accounting and uh, really just talking about um, you know, real estate investments and the marriage between that and making sure our, our books are in order and making sure yep. that we uh, give to this great country with taxes, but also to be able to give to our family by uh, saving yeah. as much as we can. Uh, tell me about uh, you and how life is going. So you have uh, two kitties now? Yes. Two kids. How old are they? Uh, one is just over two. The other is 11 months, turning one soon. Wow. Yeah. Two years old and 11 months old. Yes. Of course. And then, of course, you have Erwin as well. So you got three kids <laughs> all together. Yeah, for care. sure. Yes. So how do you do it? I mean, is it, is it busy? How do you manage life? Uh, it's actually really hectic, just like any other new mom. And I am just struggling to manage the uh, portfolio, the rental portfolio itself, my own business, and also managing the kids. Yes. It's very tough. And uh, prior to you um, uh, being married, were you in the investment world as well? Or is it after you guys got married then you started to really amp up your uh, investment portfolio? I started, uh, well, I met Erwin in 2000 and I think 11, and I started investing pretty much immediately in 2012. Yeah. So, uh, and we got married in 2013. So that's, th the rest of is history. Well, that's great. Well, listen, yeah. I am... Uh, I'm very excited, Cherry, that you're on the show. I mean, there's so many questions, and I know the answer, the correct answer to any question I give to you um, is, you know, it depends. Yes. Right? It always, <laughs> it always depends on, uh, you know, somebody's goals and objectives, yep. um, what their long-term vision is, because if I just buy, you know, one property, and I don't want to minimize that, that's phenomenal to have yep. one investment property, uh, it would more than pay for our children's uh, education and uh, wedding, perhaps. Yeah. Um, but do I incorporate? Do I not incorporate? If I incorporate, do I just have one incorporation? Do I have uh, another incorporation to protect this incorporation? And what's passive income and what's active income? And hopefully we'll be able to, um, uh, you know, answer a lot of these questions. Um, and, uh, you know, to the viewers at home, uh, it really is. Uh, you know, when we're investing in specific things, I always say it's project specific. Uh, when we're talking to Cherry about accounting, um, Cherry, I, as you agreed, yep. it's person specific and whatever, whatever plan we have. So what might be good for me uh, might not be good for a colleague of mine. You know, there's different yeah. structures. What are the different structures um, that exist right now with, with real estate investing? So let's say I have a property or two or three or four. Okay. Name off a few different kind of legal entities that I could have to protect my assets. Um. First of all, the simplest form is owning it all in your own name. In my own name. Yeah, in so your RAV own So RAV would own this property. In your own and name. And it would just be attached to income if I had a, you yes. know, a day job. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you buy insurance, commercial insurance that covers $2 million liability, $3 million, whatever you feel comfortable to protect your, own, your other asset, essentially. Okay, so I, I live in my principal residence. Mm -hmm. I have an investment property, 123 Main Street. Mm -hmm. um, it's in RAV Tour's name or yeah. RAV and Sinead's name, yeah. me and my wife. And then you say I would get what, sorry? A commercial liability insurance. Commercial liability insurance to yeah. protect 
um, if anything were to happen to my tenants, yes. anything were to happen to the property, so on and so forth. So it would need to be commercial as opposed to non-commercial? I am not an expert in that sense, but my student rentals all have commercial insurance. And yeah. all, actually, majority of our single family rentals would also have commercial insurance. And okay. it's, it covers $2 million third party liability. $2 million third party liability. Yes. So something were to, to happen. And I guess we're talking about, I mean, yeah. this show, we're talking about investing in, uh, in student rentals. Yeah. So we have one dwelling. We might have four, five, six, seven yeah. students, uh, you know, in there at, at one point. Yeah. At one time. So you need to cover yourself. Okay. Yeah. So th that's one way. Yep. Um, second way you can simple thing is just have one corporation and own it in one corporation. In one corporation. Yes. And with that one incorporation, does it matter if it's, you know, we're here in Ontario, does it matter if it's just a no name, just an Ontario number company, or does it need to be, you know, RAV Tour Incorporated? Does it really make a difference? I mean, what, what, what is the difference there? The difference is that your accountant would be able to remember the company name. <laughs> <laughs> that's all it is. Yeah, it's that's It's like all personalized it. license plates. You yeah. don't really need to, to have no, them, but no. it just well, helps well, you find your car. It, well, the, the lawyer would have to do the search. Um, if nobody else picked that name, then you would be eligible to use a name that you prefer. But the number company itself, it's attached to the Ontario Corporation number. And so it's pretty unique. So you don't even need to do that search. Okay. Yeah. And so, it, or I could do a bit of a hybrid. So it yep. would be, you know, uh, for example, mine's uh, 237793 Ontario Inc., yep. uh, but no one has. Yeah. You know, yeah, you, can or that. you can do that as well, a bit yeah. of a hybrid. But it's mm -hmm. still the real entity would be the Ontario numbered company, yeah. unless I went through, you know, my lawyer. Yeah. He did a name. search to make sure nobody else has, you know, Rav Tour Incorporated, if that's yeah. what I wanted to call it. Yeah. Okay. What yeah. else? Um, one other common strategy that people use is a three tier corporation. Three tier? So, yes, okay. three tier. So uh, real estate um, investors, once they get the portfolio up, and running and they get to three, four, five, they would want to use the three tier corporations and to save on some taxes. And um, one of the things that the three tier corporations that uh, you use, basically it consists of three corporations. Yeah. One being the active uh, property management company, the other one is the real estate holding company okay. that earns passive income. So um, the property management company is performing the function as a property manager and hence earning active income and so it's being taxed at a lower tax lower rate. rate. Okay. Yeah. Well we're gonna take a break here in a second mm -hmm. and then when we come back I really want to dissect you know these different structures and, okay. and who's it best for and mm -hmm. you know so you're having fun you you're yeah. uh, so the designations now changed it used to be uh, there was a CA which yeah. would be a chartered accountant yeah. and then there was a CGA yeah chartered Cert general accountant yeah, I certified think. general accountant. certified okay yeah. and so now we have a CPA and that's the yeah. same as a CA uh, What's no a CPA? basically um, our institute Merge everybody. Okay. So this, it used to have CGA, the Certified General Accountant. We have Charter Accountant. We have CMA, uh, Certified Management Accountant. I think it's, or Charter Management Accountant. I don't yeah. remember. And all three en entities merge into one. One is now CPA. You have all the letters. Yes. Okay. Exactly. Great. <laughs> Well, yeah. we're talking to Cherry Chan. We're talking about accounting. We're talking about investing in student rentals. The Everyday Investor continues in a moment. You don't want to go anywhere. Whenever you're considering to invest in real estate, always ask four questions to start. Number one, what is the return on investment? Number two, when do I get that return along with the money I put in? Number three, what is the minimum cash amount needed? And number four, what is the risk in the worst case scenario? Hey, it's Rav. Welcome back to The Everyday Investor. Today we're learning about investing in student rentals, how we can make a return uh, doing that. Uh, my guest co-host is Cherry Chan. She is an accountant uh, specializing in real estate uh, investments. But really, uh, Cherry, you know, I mean, you do all, you know, all sorts of work yeah. uh, in the accounting field, but you, uh, you work a lot with people that... Uh, um, are in the investment world when it comes to real estate. Mm -hmm. When you're doing your, I mean, I know you're a sought after speaker, you're, you speak to a lot of audiences often. What's the most common question that you get um, from investors when it comes to, uh, to investing, you know, how, in terms of how they should manage their, uh, their accounting? What would uh, you say? The biggest question that I get is all the time, every single event is, should I incorporate or not? Should I incorporate or not? Yes. Yeah. And most people, they don't start off incorporating generally because they don't know, you know, it's kind of real estate investing is very addictive. Yes. Right? So you don't think you're going to have, you know, I think our guests have eight, nine, ten properties. I'm yeah. not sure, you know, we'll find out when they come on um, here in the next segment. But um, 
you know, when you first buy a property, you think, okay, maybe I'll buy a property, makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, my cousin Vinny did it, so I'll do it. Yeah. Uh, and then they realize, hey, I want to keep doing this, and then they meet you, and then they, you say, well, you know, this is what it would mean to incorporate. Once you have um, one property, let's say Rav bought a property, it's in my own name, and now for my second, third, I want to incorporate, how easy is it for me to take my first one and put it in my incorporation? Is that easy to do, or? It could be fairly easy to do yeah. uh, from a tax perspective. Um, depending on how much money you've already made from the property, if you have a huge gain on it, you yeah. can easily fill out a form to de defer the capital gain. You don't actually need to pay tax. You just, you, all you need to do is just to pay your accountant to fill out the form. Okay. Yeah, that costs money. Yeah. Um, and you... You, have, you mean you have some kids that you have to feed? <laughs> yeah, okay. exactly. Okay, so we got to pay our accountant, okay. <laughs> exactly. That makes sense. Yeah, so you, need, you can defer all the taxes and accumulate it on the, on the property yeah. um, until you sell it to the third party. Okay. So you can do that. But the cost of doing that is, um, the, the, and all the cost of doing that is the land transfer tax. Oh, is that right? Yes. Okay, so because, because an incorporation mm -hmm. is really like another person. Yes, it is. So if my incorporation is called Bob Inc., mm -hmm. Rav Inc. Yeah. is putting this property, 123 Main Street, into Bob Inc. Yes. And so therefore I have to pay a land transfer tax. Yes. Wow. Yes, and okay. the land transfer tax is calculated on the fair market value. Of the fair market value of what it's worth today. Yes, yeah, so if you purchase a property 20 years ago for yeah. $300,000 in downtown Toronto, and today it's worth a million two, and it's calculated on the million two. So it might, it might not make sense for me then to put the one that's in Rab's name personal into yeah. Bob Inc. Yeah. It might not make sense. It but if I just not. bought one like last year or two, yeah. and now I've got the investor bug, mm -hmm. and I watch uh, the greatest TV show in the world, <laughs> yeah. The Everyday Investor, and yeah. I'm learning all different kinds of uh, uh, tricks in terms of, ah, oh, you like that? I'm learning all, <laughs> all, all kinds of uh, different tricks in terms of doing it, then it might make sense because there wasn't a huge gain. Yes. Um, if I live downtown Toronto, that's a double land transfer exactly. tax, uh, yeah. you know, as opposed to the outskirts. Um, so we have to calculate all those kinds of numbers. And that's where it's specific to the person. Yeah, exactly. And depending on what your strategy with that particular property is, right? Like maybe your long-term strategy is to hold on to it forever yeah. and leave it to your kids and it may make sense. But if you, are, you don't know and it's a... For example, it could be a rental or a student rental, and you're not sure when you're going to sell it. You may as well just leave it in your own name and yeah. save the, yourself some land transfer tax. Okay, right? so that leads to a great question, uh, as you just uh, mentioned there. So uh, Samuel Tour, mm -hmm. uh, 15 year old, 15 years old, beautiful uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, son of mine. Yeah. A uh, good thing that he uh, looks like his uh, mother. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, so I have a, a property. It's in Rav's personal. Yeah. Uh, because Cherry told me uh, that I've made too much on it if I were to go into the uh, incorporation side. So I left it in personal. When I want to give that property to my son, mm -hmm. what has to happen there? Do we still? Do I still? Like, let's say he buys it from me. Can he do, can he buy it from me for a dollar? Uh, but we still have to pay land transfer tax at market value. How does that work? Uh, How do you gift or give? a property to somebody within the family? Um, well, essentially, if, sorry, I have to say this, but if you pass away when yeah. he inherits the property, yes. uh, I believe that there's no land transfer tax. Okay? If, but only if I were deceased. Yes. Okay. Now, if you want to give the property to him um, directly yes. uh, while both of you are alive, then yeah. that's that will trigger land transfer tax. That will trigger land transfer tax and then on that, the market value. Yes, and you will also uh, have to pay tax on it on the gain accumulated from the day you purchase to the day that you transfer it to him. Yeah, There's I mean, no real yeah, transfer. yeah. So with any investment property, I have yeah. to pay 50% yeah. of the gain. Yes. Right? So yeah. Is that still the, the case? Yes. yes so sure. if I have a property and it's worth 300000 no matter when I sell it, mm -hmm. uh, if I sell it in one day or I sell it in you know 30 years, yeah. let's say it's now not worth 300000 it's worth 400000 Yes. I have to pay tax on the 100, half. Yep. 50, 50, I have to pay tax on 50000 Yes, right? that's right. right. Yeah, okay, yeah. so I pay tax on that, regardless if it's to my immediate family or not. Yes. Okay, and this is all if I owned it personally. Yes, yes. and it is the same if you own it in the corporation. If I own it in the incorporation, the corporation it's, is it's, just the one it's the same. It. But, I, but, but you see, in my incorporation, my son is a different class shareholder. Yes. So then that's, that's why, you know, uh, I know nothing. I just know how my accountant set up mine. So now I think these are the benefits yeah. of why we would incorporate. Yes, why don't we go sure. through some of the benefits of why um, 
Well, let me ask you, first of all, are you generally in favor for people to incorporate if they're going to get into the investment property world? Um, every time I meet uh, an investor, yeah. um, if the, it is their, their very first purchase, I always tell them, like, just keep it in your own name. Don't incorporate because I don't know if you're going to like the property at the end of the day, right? Got it. At the end of being a landlord, because it has it involves a lot of things, especially student rentals too, right? Yeah. Um, so once they make the decision that, well, yeah, I'm going to move forward and I have this long-term plan of go uh, growing my portfolio to like three, five, six, ten properties, then yes, for the second property onward, I would always tell them to incorporate. And maybe even the first, if it makes yeah, sense. Yeah, if it maybe makes sense. Maybe even if, make, if it, if it yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So for the first First one, because we don't know if somebody, because you're right, there's many people yeah. that get into this game and for whatever reason they don't like it. Yeah. Um, not that they're not even making some money, they're still even making money, but it's just not for them. Yeah. Um, and uh, then you would suggest, okay, but if somebody does want to have multiple properties, if they want to build an uh, investment portfolio, then your suggestion is to incorporate. Yes. And why? The reason is the flexibility in terms of uh, owning it through a corporation. So like using a typical student rental as an example, yeah. uh, you earn passive income because rental income is considered passive income. Yes. In Canada, corporation earning passive income is being taxed at 50%, five zero. Okay, so if Rav Tour Personal mm -hmm. owns 123 Main Street, mm -hmm. it's a student rental of five mm -hmm. you know, students at uh, you know, U of T Mississauga campus. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'm making a lot of money on the cash flow. Mm -hmm. Cash flow being um, after my uh, the income uh, you know that that brings in minus my expensive whatever's left over. Mm -hmm. That's my cash flow. Yeah. Um, uh, you would call that passive income, right? That's passive income. That is passive income inside a corporation. No, no, I'm saying if Rav owns it personally. If you own it, it doesn't matter. It's, it doesn't matter. I'm going to be taxed at fifty percent. At your marginal rate, if it is personal name. In my, so whatever I make, yeah, whatever I happen to be, yeah. okay, and so that's pretty high, 50%. Yeah. Now, I love the country we live in, yeah. so should we, we should never uh, be afraid to pay our taxes, but if there's a way that I could pay less uh, and give it to my kids as opposed to, uh, yeah. you know, the government, then that's okay too. Mm -hmm. So therefore, if I have an incorporation mm -hmm. and this, this cash flow money now is registered as passive income, yeah. I'm taxed at what? Fif you're still taxed at 50%. Now, the only catch... Sorry, I have to clarify that. Yeah. In your personal, personal, if you own it personally, yes. you're being taxed at your marginal rate. Yes. So if you What does that mean, marginal rate? Whatever, I, my income that I make in my yeah. day job, yeah. whatever that is, that's where I'm, I'm getting at the same bracket. Um, this cash flow is gonna be taxed at the same bracket. Um, in the additional Additional, it could bump it up. Yeah, it could yeah. bump it up, yes. it depends. So if, you, let's say you make over $220,000, you're yeah. one of the high, er, uh, high earner, yeah. high income earner. So you're being taxed at 53% in, in yeah. your owning. Yeah. So um, any additional income, whatever it is, dividend income, whatever, like interest income, it would be taxed at 53%. Okay. So if you were to put it in the corporation, yes, it is initially at 50%, yeah. five zero. Yeah. But when you declare a taxable dividend, yeah to the one of the shareholder, um, you would be eligible to claim 30% back. 30% back? To the corporation. So then therefore I'm really only paying 20%. In the corporation, yes, yes. over the long run. In run. the corporation, yeah. Now, the shareholder would have to report the dividend in their own name. Yeah. So then that all goes back to the flexibility talk, right? Like if you have someone sure. low income. But you can give a dividend, yeah. correct me if I'm wrong, if mm -hmm. I own a corporation, a dividend is just a fancy way of paying out the different shareholders. Yes. So my wife's a shareholder, my son, yep. my daughter, whoever, my mom, yep. my dad. I can give them up to almost $40,000 dividend yes. tax-free. Yeah, absolutely. So therefore, in my incorporation, you pay I'm getting taxed at 20%. Mm -hmm. And then when I want to take it out of my ink and give it to somebody personally who's a shareholder, yeah. um, they, 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 can, they can get up to $40,000 and pay zero tax. Uh, yeah, except the Ontario Health Premium. They always get you somewhere. Only yeah, for $1,000. A thousand pinch, dollars. Yeah, a thousand bucks. Yeah, a thousand bucks. Yeah. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah. So uh, you are not just a pretty face. <laughs> you know what you're doing here. Yeah, uh, Okay, great. Well, yeah. uh, you know, we're going we're gonna to bring on um, uh, a couple of uh, guests here. and they're gonna, We're not going to necessarily talk about accounting. We're going to talk about how they're Sounds making great. money in student rentals. And I know you have student rentals. But if uh, people want to get a hold of you to learn more, yep. they can give you a call and you got your website and it's all on the screen yeah. there and we can learn more about this. But, uh, you know, Cherry, I've, uh, I uh, need to have you back on the show because I think we could do a whole show just on accounting. I oh, think it's, definitely. Uh, it's such a long topic. Yeah. And yeah. again, it's specific to the individual. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, for those of you that are, 
are uh, watching. Uh, thanks for watching. If you're wondering what RAV Tour does, I now have an incorporation, uh, a numbered company, and a few people as shareholders, just as exactly as uh, Cherry explained. Uh, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we are going to have Evelyn on the show. She's going to teach us how she's making money investing in student rentals. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Did you know with the high cash flow and the income provided by student rentals, it is best to hold them in a corporation that provides you with the most flexibility to minimize your tax liability. Hey, it's Rav. Welcome back to The Everyday Investor. Right now, we're going to be talking to uh, what I call just an everyday person, but really an extraordinary person because she's mm -hmm. investing in the world of uh, real estate. Evelyn, Evelyn LaMarche is on the show. Evelyn, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me on the and, show. And uh, you, look, you look a little bit like me. Yeah. I, 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 I want a baby I'm inside, starting, though. Go, but I don't have a baby. What's your excuse, yes, right? Yes, I don't have an excuse. But congratulations, this is your first? Yes, thank you. Very yeah, exciting, very exciting. And uh, we're going to look at one of your latest um, uh, properties that you bought here in the world of uh, investing in student rentals. But this is not your first uh, property. You have now eight properties closing on your ninth, is that yeah, right? three weeks today we'll have our ninth. Three weeks today, you'll be closing rental. on your ninth. Student yeah. rental. Yeah. So all of these are student rentals. No, so um, the one we're closing on will be our fourth student rental. Yes. And then five single-family homes. Wow. And the one that we're going to be looking mm -hmm. at today, how many students are in this particular dwelling? Uh, there's seven students. Seven students. Yeah. So it must be a mansion. No, it's not. But it still it feels very spacious, and students mainly live in their bedrooms with their laptop computers doing their thing. Yeah. Um, so there's two on the second floor, two on the main floor. I think you brought a picture, right? Did you bring a picture with us? Yeah. Maybe we can pull that, uh, that, that up here. So this is the property right here. Yep. And this has, so sorry, explain. You have two on the... Two upstairs. Yeah. Um, two on the main floor. Yeah. And three in the basement. Okay. Yeah, there was enough ceiling height in the basement. It's actually quite and spacious, and my husband put three bedrooms down there, so... Nice. It's nice to have homes. a husband that can do that. Let's take a look the at uh, the inside. Wow, that's beautiful. Yeah. That's like a family home. Yes, yeah. it's like a family home. And so is that, Evelyn, is there a bit of a strategy here that you use to, you know, because there's, I don't want to say, uh, you know, th there's different things, you know, when, when, when we come to student rentals. Mm -hmm. uh, Cherry, I'm sure you, you get this as well. Yeah. Uh, it is a, a cash machine. It can make a lot of money in terms of cash flow. Yeah. On the other hand, Sometimes people feel like, you know, they get run down and um, they're not taken care of, so on and so forth. But I think, uh, uh, Evelyn, I think it doesn't have to be that way. I think you can, you know, have a student rental that you would want your, your boy or girl, uh, depending on which, yeah. to be able to live in as well. Yeah, and that's kind of our, our golden rule. That our, you know, when we were looking at a house and we do renovations, the goal is, you know, we want it to be a house where we ourselves would live in or that, you know, we want our son or daughter to be able to live in. Yeah. And so, you know, we always want our houses, especially our student ones, to be, you know, top 10%, because then it also attracts the best students. And when you have good students living in your house, you know, they don't do damage, you know, they pay the rent on time, you know, less headache for us managing it. Yeah. So it actually pays to have a nicer home because it just attracts, you know, a higher quality tenant. Oh, I think it's fantastic. Congratulations, you're closing on your eighth, ninth? Closing on our ninth. You're one. closing yeah. on your ninth property in three weeks. Uh, baby on the way first. Yep. Baby on the way, and your husband. What does he do for work? I mean, he he, he, did, he obviously he renovates. He does. He's an auto mechanic by trade. Yeah. Um, so a lot of the skills carry over in terms of you know using power tools and being able to problem solve okay. different things to be able to transfer that into. So we're going to look at let's look at uh, this this property here, and that's with him doing some of the work. But then this, we'll look yeah. at it maybe if we had to have you know pay market value for you know a contractor to come in. Yeah. Perfect. Um, so we bought this property. What was the purchase price? We bought it for three ninety five. Three ninety five. Okay, so that's your purchase price. Yeah. Okay, and then um, you put down twenty percent on this. Yeah. How much did you put down? Yeah. Put down so 20%. what's uh, so the down payment? So that was uh, seventy nine thousand dollars. Seventy nine thousand dollars. That's twenty percent because that's Jerry. What we still need to buy an investment property, generally speaking. 20% down? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, okay. so 79000 yeah. Did we add some closing costs there? Uh, yeah, about $4,000. To close? Yeah. How much, sorry? $4,000. $4,000 there. And then uh, we did a little bit of work. 
Yeah, so we added um, the bedrooms in the basement yeah. um, that I mentioned, and uh, my husband did all the work. So the, just the materials yeah. was about uh, five and a half thousand dollars. That's it, eh? Wow. Yeah. Okay. Pays off to have so that handy. It does. It yeah. does definitely pay. So that was all like the like the lumber and the drywall for building walls, yeah. uh, windows, electrical. Okay. So this boring. is what you're in for. Yeah. Okay. And so what's this side up to? Uh, eighty-eight thousand and five hundred dollars. 88,000, carry the one. You are yeah. correct. I'm just <laughs> testing you. So this is what you are in for is 88,000. Now let's say, let, let, let's have fun with this for a second. Let's say we had to, you know, uh, pay for the labor. Then what would that run us? Probably about... Another 50,000 or yeah, so? Yeah, probably 20 grand if we had to pay a contractor. Tw 20 to, grand total? To do all okay, that. Okay, so let's just say if we had to do that, then that would be 20K more. Um, and then therefore this Whoa. number would 1450 be 1450 more. 1450 more. And so then this number right here would be uh, what? 108,000? 1025? Uh, oh, because we're adding 14. Okay, yeah. so what'd you say? 1025. 102,500. Yeah. Just, just for fun, we'll just put that, mm -hmm. we'll just leave that there if somebody had to do it. Because not everybody is going to have a, uh, you know, I'm sure a my husband wife. Husband amazing. I'm sure yeah. my wife had, <laughs> I wish that she had a husband that could. I nail uh, something into the wall. Yeah. Okay, so how are we making money now? So um, this property is located where? Uh, it's near McMaster University in McMac Hamilton. So that McMaster has had an incredible, or Hamilton rather, has had an incredible increase. Yes, yeah. Um, so what did you use here? 10, 15% for an increase or what? I was conservative, so I did 5%. Um, 5%, For okay. appreciation, it's more than that, but we'll, we'll keep it simple and sure. conservative. So there. 5%. Yeah. Okay, yep. so that would equal 5% of the 395, so we're close to what, 20 grand? What is it? Yeah, 19,750. 19,750, yeah, so this is what you... one year of appreciation. And your yeah. first year, that's what it went up. Yeah. Okay, then we had uh, cash flow. So what's the cash flow? Of course, that's the... The money that's left over after expenses when your yeah, so after, seven tenants paid all their rent. Yeah, so after paying them the uh, mortgage, insurance, the utilities, um, insurance, all that, um, it cash flows um, $1,290 a month. Twelve ninety a month, which yeah, makes about which what, 15 is grand? 15480 for the year. $15,480. you are not you are making these numbers hard for me, eh? Yeah, so that's a cash flow. That. That's okay. <laughs> so that's a cash flow. And then obviously we're paying down our mortgage. And My the, tenants are paying down the that's mortgage. Right, that's the right. Yeah. Are, and over time. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we call that, we'll just call that debt reduction. Yeah. Uh, paying down some mortgage. And so how much are they paying on the first year? Obviously, uh, it gets bigger, but... It does get bigger. So, yeah, for the first year, it's about 660 a month of the mortgage amount that's so paid out. Eight grand? So, it's about 7920 yeah. Okay, 7920 somebody's paying down. And then, because we did a little bit of work uh, on this property, um, you know, it's not necessarily worth three ninety five now. Did you yeah. give yourself some forced appreciation on this? I did, yeah. Okay. We'll keep it conservative again, and which is about $30,000. Okay. Um... So again, if somebody were to do this, they would put in 20 and they would increase the whole thing by $10,000. That's what you're saying, right? So we'll put in here $30,000. Um, you know, you were lucky enough that you didn't have to put in 20,000. Yeah. You put in uh, 5,500 because that was just the materials. That's right. Okay, so Evelyn, all these numbers add up to what? Uh, what are we, uh, what are we adding there. up here? Um, yeah. 73,150. 73,150. So, uh, whenever we're uh, figuring out our uh, return on investment, we take our uh, profit, we divide it by what we're in for, and that's what it should spit out here. Let's see, Just let's call it division right here. So, yeah. if I use my big calculator, I'm going to take 73,150, 73,150, and divide that by, you're in for 88,500? Yep. 88,500, and that equals exactly what you told me before the show, 82%, yeah. 82.6% to be exact. Yeah. In one year. In yeah, one and that's year. in my first year. I've only owned it for one year, so yeah, wow. that's pretty, pretty accurate. That is crazy. So basically, so that, all of my money has already almost all returned That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, well, well, then of course you refinance, and that's how you the, bought other properties as that's well. Right. But well, this house, actually, we refinance another property to buy it. So this is actually an infinite return for me this Oh, house. so this actually 88,000 is not really 
That's not my own money. savings. You that's took it out from another property. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. The magic of how that happens. Yep. So now let's say we had to put in twenty. So we're in for let's say we're in for one hundred and two thousand dollars. Or sorry, you want to take your profit. So it's still the same profit. Seventy three yep. one fifty. Seventy three one fifty divided by. I'm in for one hundred and two thousand five hundred because I didn't have a handy dandy husband to uh, do this for me. And so I have some really bad news for you. Your <laughs> ROI, if we use this number, my ROI is only 71.3%. Still a home run. 71.3%. <laughs> oh, listen. Yeah. If we're making 10, 15, 20, 30%, you know, it's a lot more than we're making, you know, other places uh, and other kind of securities, if you know what I'm saying. So this is fantastic, Evelyn. Uh, congratulations. And, Thank you. Uh, you know, um, what's next? Are like, are you gonna just keep? So y you said we're closing on our ninth. Yeah. How many are student student rentals? Uh, it'll be our fourth student rental. It'll be our fourth, mm -hmm. and the last four been student rentals, or it just depends uh, on depends. what comes up. Yeah. Okay, so you're not just stuck to student rentals, no. although they do make a lot of uh, money they, for a cash flow. They do, certainly. But some, I mean, the single-family homes are nice because you get, you know, a family in there, and hopefully they're there for several years. You know, it's easier to manage for the most part compared yeah. to, you know, seven kids who are... But you're not making you know, as much cash flow. Certainly not, but yes. it's still, you know, the appreciation is still there, especially in Hamilton where yes. we invest, and uh, it's kind of nice to have different things going on in the portfolio. Well, listen, yeah. uh, congratulations, very inspiring, and uh, please keep in touch. Let me know what you're doing as you get more and more properties. Thank you so much for great. being on the show. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a great having you here. Uh, we are going to uh, go to break. Uh, when we come back, we're going to hear from Roger, how he's doing the same thing, investing in student rentals. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Did you know that capital cost allowance should be taken to defer the tax liability you've incurred from earning high rental income with student rentals? Hey, it's Rav. Welcome back to The Everyday Investor. We're learning how to make money investing in student rentals. My guest co-host, Cherry Chan, uh, accountant extraordinaire, is on the show with me. We just learned from Evelyn how uh, she's making a lot of money investing in the student rental world. And now we have Roger on the show. Uh, Roger, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having it's, me, uh, It's a great having you here. Um, you know, this is not your uh, first rodeo here. You're, you've come uh, to teach us how you're making money in the student rental world, but you have... 10, 11 properties now? 11, sir. 11 properties. Yes. Sir. It's, it's is, a habit. Is, is, is because I, I have no hair on my head. Is that, <laughs> Maybe. Uh, <laughs> commands, commands the sir. Uh, but uh, no, that's, that's fantastic. Uh, married kids. I'm married with uh, a boy and a girl. A boy and a girl. How my, old are they? My son Joshua is 13 and my daughter Madison is 10. Okay. So do you now do this full time? Yes. You do, do this full time? I do. Okay. What did you do uh, prior to this? I sold hot dogs and sold cell phones for Bow. Sorry. Seriously? Seriously. <laughs> well, of course, that's why you quit. That's right. You can't, can't, work, for, you can't work for that B word. Nope. And, um, and you sold hot, like you had a, like a... I had hot dog carts and um, I did special events, charity events, charity events, and outside nightclubs and bars. Okay. So you kind of al always had a bit of the uh, entrepreneurial bug. Yeah, since I was 12, I started. Nice. 12? 12. What were you doing at 12? I was, uh, I had flea market stands. Yeah? I sold tools and video games and... Um, uh, Nick Knacks. That's, that's fantastic. Yeah. I love I love that. And so, um, how long ago did you start uh, investing in real estate? Uh, seven years ago. Seven years ago, and you yes. have now eleven properties. Yes. Wow. And uh, how many are student rentals? All of them but one. All of them but one. So this is your niche. You really you really enjoy student rentals. I I find it very easy to do with. Yeah. Um, because I was a student and yeah. I did rent a, a student from a landlord. Yeah. Um, it is my, I guess, passion was at the time, but yeah. now it's, it, I find it very easy compared to other multifamily. So, so when we say 11 properties or 10 that are student rentals, how many you know, uh, rooms are we renting out? Like how many tenants do you have? Um, I have over 700 tenants because I manage other people's properties. Oh, you manage other people's but properties as well. my personal, yeah. I have uh, 75. 75? Yes. In 10 properties. So again, like Evelyn, you know, averaging maybe about seven, uh, seven, seven students. Yes. Uh, okay. So on this property, we're going to look at, I think you brought some pictures. We can take a yep. look at uh, yep, definitely. Uh, what we're looking at here. So again, beautiful. I mean, this is a wonderful kitchen. It's um, 
yeah, t talk about that for a second. It's a very important to have a nice property to get the higher end tenants. Yeah. But also your turnover is less. Your turnover is less if you have a nice property because right. they, they don't want to lose it during the summer. This is one of the bedrooms here? Yes, sir. Wow, beautiful. No, that makes sense. I didn't, I didn't think of that. So really what you're saying is, you know, if somebody is going to, this particular property is where? Hamilton? This is Hamilton from Mohawk College area. Mohawk College? Yes. Okay. Where's that? That's on the mountain, I think. On the mountain. Okay. Uh, between Upper James and West Fifth. And so um, if somebody's, you know, going to be there for two, three years, they're not going to go find somewhere for like nine, ten months, then move out, then find another place, if you've done it right. Right. So when I first started my business, they were doing eight-month leases. Yeah. And then when I changed, I started buying the properties and renovating them and make them look like that, yeah. I was getting 12-month leases. 12-month leases. So people just, leave. Even if they weren't there for the summer, they would just still pay. Yes. Okay. Is that what you find, Cherry? Oh, yeah, definitely. Most people are doing that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, majority of the time, the parents pay for it. So The parents are paying for it. Yeah. I guess that makes sense. Yeah. That's, yeah. Why, that's why my kids are living with me forever. <laughs> no. Um, uh, so why student rentals then? What, what, tell me, you know, as opposed to buying maybe the triplex or the duplex even, you know, the up-down scenario. What, what's the advantage of student rentals? I, and I think it's, I know the answer. It's kind of probably cash flow. It's cash flow and what I was doing for a living, I hated it. Yeah. I didn't like selling hot dogs and doing carrying. And then I, I didn't like working for Bell full time. Yeah. So I started the student rentals because I wanted to supplement my income. No, but I mean, why student rentals as opposed to just having 11 single family properties? Um, because the cash flow is higher. Cash and flow. Then, Okay. Took over my so that's the answer. Oh, yes. I, see. I, I get it. Sorry, I, I uh, should be listening a little more clearer okay. or, or, or perceiving. Uh, I was listening, but not perceiving. <laughs> it's a biblical quote. Uh, so, um, so basically, what you're saying is you're able now not to have a day job because with student rentals, the cash flow is a lot higher. Right. With other ways, you can still make money with people paying down the mortgage. It's going to increase. You get a couple of dollars of cash flow that right. really goes back into maintenance. But if you want to quit your day job and you're serious about it, then really you want to get the most cash flow possible exactly. to be able to feed the family. Yes. Got it. Okay, great. So, Roger, let's uh, take a look at one of your properties here. Okay. So, on the mountain, it's a little bit cheaper. Uh, <laughs> You know, it is the nice. McMaster, yes. Yeah, um, then the McMaster area. Yes, yes. Sir. Okay. So this purchase price was what? Uh, Two hundred thousand. Two hundred thousand dollars, and this wasn't. I mean, we're now. When was it? Yeah, this we're was, now. This was five years ago. Five years ago. Yes. Okay, great. That's okay. Let's take let's okay. take a look at it. So you bought this for two hundred thousand dollars, and back then, five years ago, were we twenty percent down? I oh, put twenty percent down always because I want a bigger cash flow. You always put down twenty yes. percent down. You're a smart guy. Just in case of a rainy day, it's nice to have some leverage there, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so um, our down payment is 20K, and then we had some... 40. Sorry. <laughs> you think I should know this? Not just because I'm Indian, but because I've been doing the show for so long. Yeah. Okay, so down payment, 40K. Uh, closing costs? Uh, I was 3,000. 3,000, and then did you do a little... I put a, be a bathroom in the basement and a kitchenette that cost me $4,500. $4,500. How are you guys getting this stuff so cheap? Um, Is that just what it costs back then? Or did, did you do it yourself? Uh, no, I had people do it for me. I just found the cheapest labor I could. And cheapest labor you could. Yeah. That's, and, then, and then there we go. Okay, so if, and this is what you're in for? Yes, sir. So if we add this up, this is what? 47,000? 47,000. Yep. 47,500. So this is what you are in for right now. So let's make <coughs> some money. So. Uh, again, if you're in this area, I know it's increased uh, dramatically. Yes. And that particular year, five years ago, I think it was going 10, 15 percent uh, a year. A yes. year. I was offered 340 for this property last wow. week. Wow. Wow. Okay. So the appreciation. Let's, yep. let's use the real numbers, and then we can okay. bring it down. So what do you do? What was it actual? 15 percent. 15 percent. 15 percent. That was the appreciation. Per year, right? Per year. Yeah. Wow. So on one year. 15% of 200, you made 30K? Yes, sir. Just like that? Just like that. Okay, and then someone's paying down our mortgage. Yep. So the mortgage is going down, and how much was that? Uh, my mortgage, I don't memorize this one. Um, okay, that's okay. 2,000. Two, that was uh, 1,942. 1,942 pay down. Okay, so 1,942 is how much in a year it was being uh, paid down. Yes, sir. And um, then, uh, that sounds a little bit low. You had a higher rate back then, I think. Yes. Maybe, right? Yeah. Is that right? We just renewed it. Okay. And then uh, the cash flow? Uh, we made 9000 uh, for the year. 8585 actually. Wow. How much? 8585 
That's, that's phenomenal. That's, that's like $700 a month you're making. Right, but we made more, but there's some maintenance and repairs and grass cutting. Of course, But of that's course. the actual numbers. Okay, and then we did some renos. Did you give yourself any increase um, in the value or you just no, left that out? just left it out. Okay, so just by appreciation, mortgage, and cash flow, and I shouldn't say just because it's 15% you used here. What does this add up to? Do you have that there? Uh, no, I don't have it. You don't side. have it there? Okay. Um, Let me actually, do it for you. If you don't, nope, that's don't. okay. So $30,000 uh, plus 1942 plus 8585, that equals uh, 40527 Yes, sir. Not bad. Seeing how that's back then would probably be more than the average uh, Canadian salary. Yeah. Uh, single. So we take that more and we, ta we take our profits <laughs> and we divide that by what we're in for. It's going to be close to 100%. 47,500 equals 85%. So you take this, divide it by this, your ROI equals 85.3%. Cherry, that's crazy. I know, it's crazy. Isn't it? Well, as Erwin always said to uh, other people, the best time to invest is 10 years ago, and the yeah. next best time is now. So is right now. This is, well said. Yeah. The best time to invest 10 years ago, the next best time is right now. Yeah. Okay, okay. so let me change this for a second. So it's 85.3%. 85, it's 85, uh, Let's say we gave ourselves an appreciation of just 5%, which is very conservative. Let's say it's 5%. So this, now, this number now changes to $10,000. Okay? Yep. So what did I take off? 20,000? Yes, sir. Okay, so now this number down here will change to 20,000. Right. Okay? So even if we give ourselves people watching saying, yeah, but he made, he got lucky because it was 15%. Well, let's use a conservative 5%, which is very conservative in Hamilton, even today. So now you, you only made 20,527, and then I divide that by what you're in for, 47,500. And the bad news is you only made 43.2%. That's amazing, right? Basically al almost doubling, doubling your money every two years and change, you know, giving yourself a 5% uh, increase. I think that's, uh, that's phenomenal and no wonder you're continuing to, so is that what your, your game plan? You just continue to buy more and more and more yeah. properties? And so are you refinancing some of your properties? Do you have uh, partners now that you're, you're working um, with? I have venture? one partner for two of my properties, but yeah. right now I'm starting to refinance and buy more. You're starting um, to refinance? I refinance, when I bought this property, I refinance another property yeah. to buy this one. Okay. So this is all free money. Yeah. And then I refinance my personal property to buy two more, and now I'm refinancing those two to pay off my personal okay. back. And so how, I mean, the, the way we're refinancing today is we still just need to leave 20% uh, yes. value in there. So for example, this property is $200,000 when you bought it, and you said that now somebody's already offered you, you know, $340,000, right? Yes. Yep. So let's just say it was three, let's just say today, let's say today this is 350K. Right. Right? We need to leave in 20%. Right. Is that correct? Yeah. So I need to leave in $70,000. Right. So that's how much I need to leave in there. And so that, therefore, it's 280 is left. Right? Yes. 280 is left. The mortgage amount, because you'd already put originally 40K, the mortgage amount is 160. Right. Right? So you have access to 120K to go do another property. That's how refinancing works. Yes. 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 <laughs> Phenomenal. Roger. I'm, in, I'm inspired. Keep in touch with me. Let me will, know uh, what you'll continue to do. I will, for yes. sure. Thank you very much. Thank you for being on the show here. Uh, we've been uh, talking to uh, Evelyn. We've been talking to Roger. We're learning how they're making money investing in student rentals. When we come back from the break, we'll hear Cherry Chan's closing thoughts on accounting, on investing in student rentals, all that good, kind of good stuff. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. If you have any questions pertaining to this show or there's a topic that you would like covered, please visit www.rogerstv.com.
Hey, it's Rav. Welcome back to The Everyday Investor. We've had a phenomenal show learning how to invest in student rentals. If you missed it, go to rogerstv.com, find out when the repeats are. Uh, it was uh, great. Uh, Cherry, thank you for being on the show. It, it's, yeah. it was great having Roger and Evelyn just kind of seeing, you know, the, mm-hmm. the uh, uh, multiple properties that they have. But even if they just had one and they're making 60, 70, 80 percent, you know, just on one property. That's crazy. Yes. That's, uh, that's something that, that's what Basically, what I am after, I was after at the time when I quit my job. Yeah. Um, I bought a single, fa- a single family home in St. Catharines and uh, converted it into student rental, and step into this fantastic world of only student rentals. Yeah, so that's what yeah. you enter and do it. You, you, yeah. you, I mean, you invest in different things. I know, mm-hmm. I think we were in a couple of projects together in the land yeah. development side, but you're uh, also an active uh, investor in the student rental world. Yes. And um, it's great to, uh, to be able to have uh, an accountant in the family, <laughs> such as yourself, to make yeah. sure that, um, you know, we're just keeping, uh, and it doesn't, I mean, I know, what is your kind of maternal thoughts for, for, for those that kind of want to take shortcuts when it comes uh, to accounting. It's not worth it, right? It's not worth it for no. CR, CRA to give you a call. And, no. you know, do you ever have any of that? Some of your friends or, or, or I wouldn't say clients because I know you wouldn't advise, <laughs> but is there people that come to you when it's kind of too late? Now they're getting audited and they, they didn't dot their I's, cross their T's. Touch on that for a second. Um, he's not really my client. Yeah. So um, he, um, I got this guy who gave me a call and uh, he's actually, it has nothing to do with student rental. He bought a few um, new built. Okay. And then he basically. Pre-con- pre-construction. Yes, okay. pre-construction. And he basically sell it within a year. Okay. And for some of them, they the previous accountant, well, he's not my client. So he, his existing accountant yes. uh, reported it as capital gain. But because he saw it in, he sold all of them, uh, four or five of them in a row in a few years in two to three years spread, yeah. and uh, he made capital gain on every single one of them. See how he come back and say, hey, like you're not making capital gain. This is a business that you're running. So 100% is taxable. As you mentioned earlier, capital gain is 50% taxable. Wow. Yeah. So he was buying pre-construction, let's just say condos, for House. example. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay? And so when they, when they matured and they exited, he would say that um, because it increased so much, I'm going to pay tax on 50%, the capital gain. Yeah. But Revenue Canada said, no, you're doing this so much yeah. that this is actually a business of yours yes. to buy pre-construction condos mm-hmm. or housing, whatever he did. And so therefore, we're going to tax you at 100% because that's what a business would be taxed at. Exactly. I see. Yeah. So I don't think he... I mean, that's a bit of a gray area, right? I mean, I don't think he necessarily knew mm-hmm. um, or he hoped he wouldn't get caught. I mean, I would think that most people would do that, no? Uh, <clears throat> some, some people would do that. Some yeah. people would own 10 condos. Like, if you are using condos as an example, like yeah. some investor would buy 10 condos all at once. Yeah. And then uh, because the pre-construction profit is huge, so when the time they actually, when the units are actually available for sale, they would sell them all at once. And then see how it would come after those people, right? No, uh, no but what I'm saying is, and not to defend him um, mm-hmm. uh, per se, but yeah. there's nowhere where it says, okay, but if you do it, Two pre-constructions. Now it's business. Like there's no. It's not written anywhere, is no, it? But it's no. it, it's your own prerogative or CRA, CRA more importantly, yeah. prerogative that no, we think this is now a business, and so therefore we're going to hit you with this tax. Um, well, again, CRA is a judge. Like it's. I wouldn't necessarily call it a, a judgment. It's a yeah. ruling, right? Yeah, yeah. So if you don't agree with their ruling, you can take it to court. But in his specific case, it's just hard to take it to court. Of course, if you've done yeah. that many. Yeah, exactly. If you've done that many. Okay, mm-hmm. great. Well, that's yeah. why he needed Cherry Chan on his side. Yeah, for yes. sure. <laughs> um, so we have a few few moments before we, uh, well, you know, a couple of minutes before we go to break. Um, what is the one or two things that you want uh, the viewers at home to know when it comes to accounting, when it comes to investing in real estate, student rentals? Any, you know, what what would you say to them? Well, for the people that are at home, like the number one thing that you need is a team. So you need for whether it is student rental or not, you need uh, a qualified real estate accountant, qualified real estate lawyer your qualified real estate agent as well because we all know the ins and outs of what you're investing and what you're trying to do and uh, that's where 
the most value is coming and, in. And when you say qualified, I, I, I mean, I, I would say somebody who's doing it. I want my accountant to be an investor. Yeah. I want my realtor to be an investor. I want my lawyer to be an investor because things change so much. They've yeah. got to be in the know-how as well. Yeah, exactly. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, one of the things that uh, we do is that, <clears throat> like, for example, for student rental, we actually go out and then check out the school and visit the school. And we actually dig out all the court cases and look at the court case and see how to protect ourselves as landlord as yeah. well. So okay. that's something that... Well, fantastic. Yeah. Cherry, like, like I said, uh, I think we could do a whole show mm -hmm. just talking on accounting. So yeah, I'd like to bring you sure. back sometime. Okay. It's been wonderful uh, having you here. Thank you so much. Fantastic. Yes, yeah. I appreciate it. Uh, thanks for watching, everyone. On behalf of Rogers TV and myself, Raf Tour, we'll see you next week. Same place, same time. Honey, I love you. I'll be home soon. Thanks for watching, everyone.